Well, hey everybody, I hope you are doing well. Today's location brings us to the home of Red Fox. I don't know if this house is haunted or not. There are a lot of rumors. I have lived in Las Vegas pretty much my whole life and I've heard rumors the whole time. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look around and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Red Fox and the history of the home. And then we are gonna head down here and I'm gonna show you where he is buried and show you his grave. So let's go. Now this little red fox here was put here by Shannon Day who was occupying this property up until recently. Now it is Las Vegas Handyman, but I remember it being Shannon Day Realty. And I knew her personally. She managed a property that I lived in. And I remember asking her about this red fox. And also let's go take a look over here. This is very, very cool. She painted the front door red and she also painted the front entrance red. So let's take a look at this, very, very cool. And I hope they keep this up, the new owners. But as you can see, the front entrance, she painted the cement red and yeah, it's kind of fading away. So gosh, I hope the new owners keep it up, but they might not, I don't know. But yeah, here's the front door and uh, pretty cool, huh? And then right here, Red Fox, 1969. And pretty cool, huh? Wow. So we're gonna go around the back here and take a look. Now this was fenced off when uh, Red owned it. And uh, right here was, you can see a driveway, but it was fenced off. I don't remember exactly where the fence came out to. It may have just come all the way out there. In the front, I want to say that there was a little wooden picket fence. And then there was maybe like a fence here. Now here is a picture of Red Fox, I believe, from this angle in the 80s. And this is the day that they raided his home, the IRS. And uh, you can see... It was a dark brown house. Yeah, now he's got a big backyard back here. So the pool was probably here. And I wanna say that this was like the cabana for the pool. And maybe the pool was right here. Cause it looks like it's been filled in. And then as you can see, like I said, it's a pretty big backyard. And check this out. Here is some like more original part of the house. This rock here on the side of the building was very, very popular in the 60s. And so, as you can see, very, very cool. And then the roof looks like it needs a little bit of work. But this back here, this part back here of the house looks original. Very, very cool. So I just got kicked off the property by security. And so we're gonna go around here. And uh, yeah, that was a trip. You know what? When this was Shannon Day Realty, I remember she had Saturday, Sunday off. She would have, or actually she had Sunday off. And today's a Sunday and it's like a hundred degrees out here too. I did not think anybody would be here, but uh, yeah, security just stopped me. So here's a good look at uh, the front yard or what was Red Fox's front yard. Now he didn't have any of this landscaping along here. It was just a yard if I remember. I think he may have had a few cactuses and a tree or two. Now I know Red, uh, Red Fox had a, down here I believe it was close to Eastern and Hacienda, Red Fox had a souvenir shop. It is no longer there. The only thing I could dig up was this photo and I believe that is from when he had the uh, the souvenir shop. So guys, we're gonna head down to the, uh, down to Red Fox's grave and uh, it'll be down here at Palm Eastern Cemetery. So we're gonna head down right now. So guys over here on the east side of town, this is Palm Eastern Cemetery. And uh, this is on the same street, ironically, that Red Fox lived on. Um, he lived on Eastern about three or four miles down that way. And uh, he is buried in arguably one of the nicest cemeteries in Las Vegas. This is, uh, there's a bit of traffic on Eastern Boulevard, but uh, overall 
It is, this is a very nice cemetery, very peaceful. Well guys, here we go. We are coming upon the grave of the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Red Fox. Nineteen twenty two to nineteen ninety one. You are my always an incredible man, an incredible performer. He was so much more than uh, than just Sanford and Son, but I know that that is his iconic identity, and that's what he will always be known as Sanford and Son. But I urge you guys to dig up his old uh, comedy records. They're still out there. I doubt they're in print, but you can find them in old uh, vinyl record stores. Uh, find those and go uh, Google his old uh, Las Vegas performances and his old nightclub performance performances. Um, they're just hilarious. Like I said, I, I just didn't understand him when I was a little kid. I remember him from Sanford and Son. I was about 10 when that was out, 10, 11 years old. So I, I kind of got the jokes, but as I got older, I listened to those records of my father and my uncle, those old nightclub records, and just incredible, incredible performer. He influenced so many people. Um, and, uh, you know, with that being said, it was very gracious of uh, Eddie Murphy to pay for his uh, arrangements at the end. I know Red Fox had financial trouble at the end, and that's that's too bad, but you know what? He was such a great man. He should never be uh, judged by just, you know, his financial difficulties. So many of us, I've had financial difficulties. I think we all have. We can all relate. So with that being said, guys, I want to thank you for joining me on today's video. I really had a lot of fun making it and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please consider subscribing to my channel. It does help make me a better vlogger. I enjoy hearing from each and every one of you, and I'll talk with you on my next location. Bye-bye.